The 992 comes with an extra pedal, unless you're in Australia. Porsche taking a swoopy quad pipe brick around the Nürburgring. And no IMSA P cars at the delayed Le Mans 24 hour this year. Stick around for Ren 11 news after the intro. Hello and welcome to the latest round of Porsche news from your favorite Porsche channel, Ren 11. Please don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to be notified of the latest episode as soon as it hits so you can be ahead of the curve. As this is our inaugural news episode, I wanted to let you know that these are going to be short and snappy stories collated from various sources for your viewing enjoyment. So there is always something for everyone within the community. First up, Porsche have now given the 992 generation 911 Carrera a stick and a clutch in Europe giving folks a chance to have a lighter car with a more traditional method of moving forward. It saves about £100, the, the same amount of weight incidentally I've put on during the lockdown. As you have to have the Sport Chrono package to gain the manual box, it does give auto rev matching, dynamic engine mounts, access to the Porsche Track Precision app and a little switch on the steering wheel to change the driving modes. Essentially, more stuff to boast to your mates at the golf course. Unless you're in Australia, Yep, sadly, because over 90% of 911 sold out there are PDK, Porsche have taken the decision to not give the Carrera the manual box for the foreseeable. They did go on to say that the high performance models, when manuals are preferred, will no doubt get them. So GT3s and perhaps GTSs? Tell us, do you think they should offer the manual gearbox globally? Is PDK that good The manual cars are just pointless? Join the conversation in the comments below. Next up, spy photos have been posted on the web of a sportier version of the KN Coupe at the Nordschleife. How do we know it's sportier? Well, it has interestingly placed quad pipes. Dear Lord. As this could very well be a GTS model, it may share the twin exhaust style of its 911 brethren, which means those two tips on either corner are most probably fake. SUVs remain a popular choice for buyers, and Porsche SUVs are known for their abilities and dynamic prowess, so this, I believe, is a shakedown for performance. However, some have reason to believe that this is being set up as an opportunity to get the three-peat in ring-beating lap times in different types of cars, adding to the 919 and the GT2 RSMR. With the peak SUV ring time at 7 minutes 42, completed by Volkswagen Group stablemate, the Audi RSQ8, it would be a hell of a snatch of the crown. And you know what? Why not? They battled on the racetrack at the same time, and it would be a lovely usurp from Porsche. However, is this a pointless exercise? Will it make the KN an attractive option for a daily compared to a fast saloon? Tell everyone in the comments below. Lastly, talking about racetracks, two Porsches have been pulled out from the delayed Le Mans 24 hour this September, with only the factory Porsche team running their WEC cars. The decision to not run the IMSA 911 RSRs? That f COVID-19. Not only is this invisible douchebag of an epidemic taking a chunk out of humanity, it's hampering many businesses globally. The WeatherTech Sports Car Championship team have cited that this has made the journey over from the US to the South an unnecessary expense for the team, which is completely understandable to be fair. The Corvette C8R won't race at Le Mans either. They have rescinded their place, reducing the GTE class to just seven cars. Could it be the last emissions? Perhaps not. It's a shame, but at the same time, the invisible killer coronavirus has forced all of us to change how we do everything. And this is no different. I think we all hope whatever new normal service will resume, it will do so soon. What do you think though? What other options do the organizers have to keep teams in the greatest race on earth? Are teams doing enough to run safely? Are they too OTT with the steps that they are taking? Tell us all below. Thank you so much for watching. Coming next on the YouTube channel for Ren11, on Tuesday, my Instagram live interview with legendary tuner RJ Devera comes out, where we talk about the car scene, why Porsche is the next level car for many JDM and Euro car fans, and his involvement with the first Fast and Furious. We have regular live Instagram interviews with key people from the Porsche community, so make sure you find us on Instagram, at Ren11, and give us a follow. We will see you next Friday for more Porsche news. So remember to subscribe and click that bell button to be notified of the next video. Be safe, be good, and much love, folks.